It is Monday and of course it is Easter Monday which means for many of you it is still a uh, weekend or an extended holiday or maybe you've even taken that time off um, after tomorrow through to Anzac Day if you're in New Zealand or Australia and have an extended long weekend or extended holiday for only taking a few days off. Uh, it is a bit of a rain day here today. I know you can't see the rain or hear it, um, but it has definitely been raining and it has been beautiful. But of course, it has meant that I am stuck indoors until that rain hopefully passes through later on this afternoon. So with it being Monday, my day looks a little bit different today. You know, last week I shared about how I motivate myself for the week ahead and the strategies that I talk to my clients about which help them bring back more time into their lives. Um, I normally start every day with sitting down, planning you know, what my week looks like, and then starting to take action in my business. Um, I have still done some of that, don't you worry. Um, however, right now I've got a beautiful cup of tea and I'm sitting down to give myself some self-love. And this is what I wanted to share with you guys today. I guess, you know, predominantly our Easter could be filled with heaps of hot cross buns, chocolate, delicious food, spent with time spent with family and friends. And mine has certainly been exactly the same. I can tell you that my jeans are feeling a little bit tighter today from all those chocolates I've eaten over the last few days. And I guess with spending, you know, predominantly more time with friends and family over a longer period of time than what we normally do, it can sometimes leave us feeling a little bit off balance or a little bit tired or a little bit energetically depleted. So I wanted to take some time today to sit down and just rebalance myself, you know, reflect on the amazing time that I've had over the last few days and um, I guess send love and gratitude and reflect on all the beautiful moments that I have had created in my world. But also just um, think about some of the other things that have come up over that time. And, um, you know, I guess check back in with myself, with my energy levels and, you know, how I'm just feeling in a whole. Now, I do this a couple times a week and it's something I encourage my clients to do, which is why I'm talking about it. Um, is to, you know, dedicate a couple of days where maybe you've got 20 minutes to just check back in with you uh, as a sign of self-love. You know, a lot of people believe that massages and getting their hair done or nails done or, you know, spending lots of money uh, is all about, you know, self-love. And I am all for massages and treating myself, but I'm also all for taking the time to be able to check back in with my soul and, you know, and, and make sure that I am not over committing myself or under committing myself. Um, and I'm able to dedicate enough time to myself as well as to others. And, you know, it's also a time of healing, um, you know, emotional healing is what I'm talking about here. Um, and to give you a little bit of an insight, you know, I've worked really hard over the last, you know, predominantly three years around boundaries and specifically personal boundaries. Um, you know, a few years ago, I was very much a people pleasing yes person, as we all are, right? We love to be able to say yes, yes, yes to people. Um, and sometimes that does not serve us. And a few years ago, it definitely wasn't. Hence how I got myself into such emotionally challenging and damaging relationships and friendships and they turned quite toxic because I was always saying yes to them and never to myself. And it really drove me into a, a really dark and, and sad place. Um, so taking my lessons from that and putting a lot of work into personal development, into myself and working with mentors and coaches and, and other people, you know, I've really learned to understand more about my needs and how to put myself first and then communicate those. And sometimes when you communicate that, it doesn't always go quite the way that you hoped it would and sometimes others don't always understand. Now, I had a situation over the weekend when someone wanted to come around um, and pop in and visit, and um, I was waiting for a friend to arrive. I was about to go out. My dad was coming around to pick up some stuff. I had quite a lot of stuff going on, and I said to that person, can you please not come? We'll catch up tomorrow as planned, um, and, you know, and, and whatever. 
and that person chose to go against my wishes, my personal boundary and my own personal safety and respect um, and turned up anyway. Now, former Louise would have just been like, oh, well, I guess that's just is what it is. Um, and I would have beaten myself up about it and got quite frustrated that my boundary had been broken and that would have continued to happen. Now, I am new and reformed current Louise where my personal boundaries and, you know, my feelings and my safety are very, very important to me. And so I chose to, instead of taking the easy way out, have a conversation about my needs and how I was feeling um, about, you know, that specific situation. Now, it was, of course, really challenging to talk about that. I don't love conflict like most people, and this person actually meant a lot to me. However, I decided that I would put myself and my needs first and have a conversation about that and hope for the best. Now, unfortunately, that conversation went quite pear-shaped and um, our relationship is, um, I believe, no longer um, alive. Um, but, you know, I guess reflecting back on that, yes, of course it has emotionally hurt me. You know, I love friends, I love family, I love seeing people, but I also love myself and I love my time and I love being able to put my needs first. And, you know, I'm only human and human, you know, we're hardwired for connection. So, of course, it has emotionally hurt me having to have that conversation. Um, but at the same time, being super proud of actually putting myself first in that situation and sticking up for what I needed at that time, regardless of that outcome. Now, it has been quite raw. I've spoken to a couple of people about it over the last few days. And today I decided to sit in that emotion, journal about it, send it love and light and gratitude, and then let it go to be able to move on. And to me, that is a really great sign of self-love, to be able to sit down, reflect, process, and then move on without rushing my way through that um, vulnerability or that, that, that scary place. So here I am, I'm sitting on my beautiful couch and I've got my beautiful cup of tea and I'm about to dedicate, you know, 20 minutes to half an hour of my day, checking back in with my feelings, checking back in with, you know, my thoughts, my process, um, rebalancing and just giving myself some love and attention before I start giving everyone else some love and attention for the rest of my day and the rest of my week. So if you've also been spending a lot of time with friends and family over the Easter break and, you know, you're feeling a little bit depleted of energy or, you know, there's been some th great moments and there's been some challenging ones, then, you know, I highly recommend getting away today, you know, for just a few minutes if that's all you can spare. Rebalance your emotions, check back in, you know, reflect on the lessons that you've got, you know, be proud, send yourself love and gratitude and then feel really energetically restored to go back to those friends and family or even work to be able to put in 110%, not feeling energy depleted, but feeling energy full. So wishing you all an absolutely amazing Easter Monday. If you're still away, have a great time. If you're driving home, be safe on those roads. I can hear one of my clients in my head going, yes, mom. But you know, it can be a challenging time with traffic. So enjoy the rest of your extra long weekend. And, um, and I look forward to talking to you guys again soon. Bye.